Hey everybody, we're going to look at uh, what are known as standard redu <coughs> reduction potentials. Uh, previously we looked at what galvanic cells are and we didn't really talk about how to calculate the cell potential, we just talked about what the cell potential was and the origins of it and basically how to set up galvanic and voltaic cells. So what are standard reduction potentials? They're essentially a chart of, of, of voltages that have already been calculated and tabulated. So it's a bunch of half reactions. Again, why we wanted to talk about the half reactions at the beginning of the unit. So we're going to have a bunch of half reactions that are tabulated, and the half reactions that we're going to be looking at are reduction half reactions. And it's their potentials, basically, because they haven't been hooked up to anything yet, of what energy they can produce. So <clears throat> we typically use reduction potentials, and there's no list of standard oxidation potentials. So there's not two charts, there's only one. We use little notations down here to recommend the overall cell voltage. And then so we represent the half cell, the half cell for the reduction. What we're going to do is we're going to take those reduction half cells and combine them with oxidation ones. So where do you get the oxidation ones if there's no chart? Well, you should know that reduction is the gaining of electrons, so oxidation would be the loss of electrons. So you would just use the same chart. You just have to read it backwards. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's an example of a standard reduction potential. Um, I'll give you one of these in class if you don't have it already. Uh, here's your voltages and these are your half reactions. These are not complete reactions because they have electrons already in them. All right, so you probably have already seen this before, but anyway, the electrons are gonna be added to fluorine. We know fluorine is very, very good at taking electrons and making an ion, hence why it has a very high voltage. The more positive the value, the more likely that substance will gain the electron. So therefore, this is gonna be the best reduction reaction. Okay, the best reduction reaction is at the bottom. Okay, best reduction. I wish we could use the terms oxidizing agent because that's what this is. It's a great oxidizing agent. Down here would be the best oxidation reaction. Now you have to look at this backwards for the oxidation reactions because if fluorine were to lose electrons, it would produce fluorine and two electrons. It wouldn't be very good because that would reverse the sign notation. Remember from thermochem, we reverse the reaction, we reverse the sign notation. So it's not going to be everything we're going to use here because these are a little different, but that's true. So if I were to have lithium, losing electrons, lithium metal, would be a positive through it. That would be the opposite. So lithium losing electrons to make lithium plus and becoming minus, well, that's very good. Metals tend to do that. Metals are, are, are good at losing electrons because they're not very good at holding on to them. So it makes sense that the lithium is more likely to lose an electron than it will to gain electrons, hence why a negative voltage so for the oxidation part of this, we would say this is positive 3.05 volts, okay? All right, so those are your potentials. And notice in here you've got your metals down here at the bottom. you got some nonmetals up here at the top and then other bigger reactions, okay? And down here in the middle, we have a zero because that's our, our, our standard hydrogen electrode. So keep in mind, these are always reduction reactions and not oxidation. You reverse them for the oxidation. All right, so here's the standard hydrogen electrode. <clears throat> the uh, this is our reference one. So what they've done is they established that this is zero. So we have our hydrogen electrode. This is a good one to look at because it's got the gases in here with the positive symbol or with the with the platinum. So you have hydrogen gas that's pumped in here, and when the hydrogen gas comes in contact with the metal, it's going to draw electrons over. So the electrons are lost by the zinc and attracted over here. You have a solution of nitric acid down here. The nitrate goes up here because of the, the transfer of electrons and all that we saw earlier, and you get a voltage. And this voltage is going to be for both cells, right, both of them. But we're going to say that this one here is zero. So when we come back and do our calculation, we can say, okay, here's, here's what we're doing. We're taking our oxidation and our reduction. Well, what's being oxidized? Let's go back and look. The electrons are being lost on this side, so this would be my anode, and this would be oxidation, loss of electrons. So therefore, we have oxidation here, reduction here. So the zinc is losing electrons while the hydrogen is gaining the electrons. So we know that the overall voltage, right, we measured that in the lab, we know that that's the voltage, 0.76 volts. We're gonna set this equal to our oxidation reduction. Well, we know that we're gonna set this one equal to zero, so we're saying that this is zero, so therefore the oxidation of zinc would be 0 0.76. Now remember, the chart is based on reductions, not on oxidation reactions, so Therefore, we have to reverse the reaction. We want the zinc to not lose electrons, but the zinc to gain electrons. And we're going to take this reaction and rewrite it as a reduction potential, and therefore we would make it negative 
0.76 volts. Okay, so the reductions are always going to be gaining electrons. And that's why zinc is on this chart at 0.76 negative because it's down below. Why is it happening? Because everything above is going to cause the bottom ones <clears throat> to oxidize. So if you have one above, it's going to have to oxidize the one below. So keep that in mind as we're doing this. So if this reaction up here is very good at reducing, it's going to oxidize everything below. So if I put this together with this reaction here, I'm going to have to reverse this one so that the iodine is going to be you know, losing the electrons as opposed to gaining them because fluorine is always going to take them. We'll talk more about that in class. Okay, so we can come back to our zinc-copper electrode. Remember we had the zinc solid reacting with the copper ions to produce zinc ions and copper solid. Okay, well for this reaction, the voltaic cell, we know the voltage was 1.1 volt. And therefore, if we know that the zinc one is now 0.76 negative, well what's zinc doing? Zinc is going from 0 to positive 2, right? 0 to positive 2, therefore it's going through oxidation. So what we're going to want to do is reverse the sign notation on that and make that our oxidation reaction because it's what's happening in this process and this is going through reduction. So therefore when we plug it into the equation, we're plugging in the 7.76 into the oxidation part, we can calculate the standard reduction potential for copper 2 plus to gain 2 electrons to become copper solid. Okay, That would be what would be listed on the standard reduction potential. So if we look at copper, uh, copper is right here, so it's positive 0.34 based on that, okay? And that's how they figured out that chart. That chart was figured out just by doing that with all of them. All right, one last thing, well, two things. I'm going to show you an example, but for one, uh, when we combine standard reduction potentials like I was doing, there's a couple of things to remember. If you use this equation, you have to remember to reverse the sign of the oxidation. I like this. I want you to know that. I want you to know that the oxidation reverses and you reverse the sign notation. So if you reverse the reaction, the sign of the potential must be reversed. Okay, so that's very good. Like the book, I think, does something different. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't use the book. I would use what I do because, you know, I'm better than the book. Anyway, number three, standard reduction potentials are intensive. This is the one that everybody misses and screws up because we did everything with uh, thermodynamics because heat is extensive. Electrical energy is intensive because it's joules per coulomb. We'll get to that a little later. So it doesn't depend on how much. What that means is if you multiply the reaction, you do not multiply the voltage. So do not multiply voltage, okay, your cell voltage, your EMF. So if you double the reaction, you keep the voltage as is. Do not multiply cell potential when you make that change. I'll show you an example. All right, so let's take a look. What we're doing here is we are going to calculate the cell potential, which is the EMF for the cell potential. That's what we're looking for here under standard conditions. Well, that's going to be the oxidation plus the reduction. Okay, so the oxidation plus the reduction. All right, so I need to look at the reaction. What this is is a solution of, of zinc, I'm sorry, nickel nitrate. The nitrates we don't care about. Those drop out. So really what we're looking at is nickel 2 plus ions and sodium silver ions. Okay, nitrates drop out. They're not going to be that important. So what's happening here is that the silver is going from a zero charge to a plus one charge. Nickel is going from plus two charge to a zero charge. So what's undergoing reduction would be the nickel. Nickel is going through nickel is going to be gaining two electrons to become nickel two or a nickel solid. We can figure out what the reduction for that is. And the silver is losing electrons. How do I know that? Because it's going from zero to plus, so it has to lose electrons, and we can look up the oxidation for that. Okay, so we go to our chart, and we look up the two numbers. So you would find silver in here, and silver has a voltage of 0.8, and nickel is down here is a net voltage of 0.28. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. So my nickel was um, negative 0.28 for the voltage for the nickel. And if you go back on that chart, the voltage for this under reduction was positive, but now I'm going to make it negative uh, 0.8 volts because I reversed it. I reversed the reaction. Now notice the electrons don't match up. I have to multiply this by 2 in order to get that to happen, but I will not double this. This is intensive. It's independent of how many times I do that. Alright, so if I add these two reactions up, 
<clears throat> the electrons cancel, I end up with nickel, 2 plus, plus 2 silver, gives me uh, nickel, and 2 silver ions. And when I do that, the overall cell potential is the sum of the two steps, so I'm going to end up with a negative 1.08 volts. Now the question is, will this process happen? If I take silver uh, metal and I put it into a solution of nickel-2 nitrate, will the reaction happen? Is it spontaneous? Is it thermodynamically favorable? No, it is not. It's not going to happen. But if I take nickel solid and I put it into a solution of silver nitrate, the reverse reaction will happen because it's negative voltage. We want a positive voltage for it to be spontaneous or thermodynamically favorable. So what would the free energy be for this process? Positive. What would K be? Less than 1. Okay, guys. Uh, that's it for today. We'll kind of look at some stuff in class. See you later.